Our ancient ancestors didn't deliberately go around leaving puzzles for us to find thousands of years later, as amusing as that thought might be. Instead, we simply don't have the relevant knowledge to properly understand some of the things that they left behind. There are countless mysterious objects and places all over the world that scientists, paleontologists, and archaeologists have never quite solved the riddles of. And we're about to see some of them here. We don't mean to alarm anyone, but scientists don't really understand the phases of the sun. That's a little alarming to hear when the well-being of our entire planet depends on our native star, but it's true. We know that because in January 2022, scientists completed a lengthy study of ice cores found in Antarctica and Greenland. Locked within the ice is evidence of a colossal solar storm that happened around 9,200 years ago. That's a problem for scientists because, according to their data modeling, the sun was going through a quiet phase 9,200 years ago and shouldn't have been throwing out solar storms anything like this big. The evidence of the storm is there in the levels of beryllium-10 and chlorine-36 preserved in both the ice and the sediment within it. If a storm of this size happened today, it would cause an almost total global communications blackout and pose a clear and present danger to air traffic. Since we now know that we can't trust the data modeling of our best scientists, we have no way of knowing if or when one might be coming. Let's head to North America and check out a discovery that was made in Nevada on December 23, 2021 and was first reported on Christmas Day. Researchers there confirmed the discovery of a 55-foot-long creature that's been described as a Triassic-era sea monster. It lived around 247 million years ago. Scientists have given the newly discovered creature the catchy name Simbospondylus youngorum and describe it as a marine reptile with an enormous jaw. It's part of the ichthyosaur family. Back when the creature was alive, its natural habitat would have been a mega-ocean that once existed off the west coast of North America called the Panthalassic Ocean. The species appears to have survived a period known as the Great Dying, which occurred around 5 million years earlier and killed more than 90% of the animals that existed in the world at the time towards the end of the Permian period. The precise cause of this mass extinction event remains unknown. It's to be hoped that studying the remains of this sea monster might provide us with a few answers, although it's still early days in terms of doing the necessary work. For a long time, archaeologists wondered whether the existence of the so-called Dragon City of the Xiangnu Empire was a myth. In July 2020, they discovered the truth. In the middle of Mongolia, sitting on the banks of the Orkhon River, the long-lost city was finally found. The mysterious Qiangyu Empire was formed from the confederation of tribes that lived on the Eastern European steppe more than 2,300 years ago and lasted for around four centuries. They coexisted with the Chinese dynasties to the east, but alternately traded and fought with them many times over the years. Dragon City was said to be the most outstandingly beautiful city of its era, hidden in Mongolia's Kanghai Mountains. We'll never know if that was true at the time, but there isn't much left of it today. All archaeologists have been able to identify is the city's old double wall, a reservoir, and an unknown structure inscribed with the words, Son of Heaven, written in kanji. Experts aren't sure what to make of it all, and so it seems that the Dragon City will forever keep some of its secrets. Nature provides at times and takes away at others. If you're lucky, nature may someday return what it has taken. It happened to this temple in India's Odisha region. It was constructed in honor of Lord Gopinath, one of Vishnu's many avatars in the 15th century. For 400 years, all was well with the temple, but in the 19th century, 
the Mahanadi River abruptly shifted course and drowned the area, engulfing not just the temple, but also an entire adjacent town. The temple statues were preserved and transported to the nearby Gopinath Dev Temple, but the structure itself was doomed. The water eventually receded, and the temple emerged in June 2020, although it appears terribly damaged in these photos, where it is obviously still mostly underwater. Local officials have expressed optimism that the excess water can be artificially drained away and the shrine repaired. The Indian National Trust for Art aspires to have the temple dismantled, relocated, and reassembled if restoration is not possible. Given the temple's current state, that may be a little too much to hope for. But then again, who knows what could be possible? We're off to Mexico now, where there's been a lot of excitement among archaeologists about this large, intricately carved stone in Colima State. It's recently been registered for protection by the National Institute of Anthropology and History on the grounds that it's thought to be an ancient stone map. The volcanic rock was thrown from the nearby Fuego de Colima volcano some 2,000 years ago, but was likely carved around 2,100 years ago. The lines on its surface can be interpreted as waterways, with cavities that might represent small settlements or villages. Traces of these ancient villages have been found at the locations indicated by the map. The pre-Hispanic residents of Colima had no written language, so this may have been a pictorial way of passing on knowledge, or perhaps just a way of identifying and marking out their territory. The idea of the rock as a map has critics, with some experts suggesting that their colleagues simply see what they want to see when they look at the markings but the Institute is convinced by its merits enough to designate it as a historical monument. Until June 2020, it was thought that the northern line of the Great Wall of China, also known as Genghis Khan's Wall, was built between the 11th and 13th centuries as a line of defense against the marauding Mongol hordes of Khan and his men. In June 2020, that supposition was proven to be untrue a systematic survey of this section of the wall has revealed that it may have been useful in preventing nomadic raids, but it was also a means of monitoring and controlling local nomadic populations, and more specifically, their enormous herds of animals. This was a key objective of the Kitan Liao Empire, which existed in the region at the time, and sought to expand its power by controlling the nomads who lived in the Northern Territory. A series of 72 structures built into the walls have been interpreted as a means of monitoring the population from low vantage points, rather than using high vantage points to keep a lookout for an approaching army. Rather than protecting the region from Genghis Khan, Chinggis Khan, or anybody else, the wall appears to have been a means of consolidating regional power. The Por Bajin complex in the Tuva region of Russia is one of the greatest archaeological mysteries in this enormous country. Its name translates from the Tuvinian language as Clay House, which tells us what it's made out of, but not what it was built for. This strange site, positioned on an island in the middle of Terracol Lake, is a relic of the Uyghur culture and was most likely built during the 8th century. When it was first discovered by archaeologists, it was initially thought to be the ruins of an ancient fortress, but subsequent studies have revealed that the layout of the buildings and the rooms they contained is more consistent with the design of an ancient Chinese royal palace. Mysteriously, there's no evidence of human activity in or around the site other than the existence of the buildings themselves. That might suggest that it was built somewhere around 777 as a temple to the followers of the Manichaeism religion. Tangri Bogu Khan, a devotee of that faith, was the ruler of this area in that year, but was violently overthrown in an uprising led by opponents of the religion two years later. With Khan gone and the religion outlawed, any temple dedicated to it would have been deemed surplus to requirements. 
The Archaeological Survey of India hailed a great discovery in July 2020 when it found a 9th century monolithic Shiv Ling sandstone in Vietnam's Cham Temple complex. It's likely that the monument would never have been found at all were it not for a conservation project the team was there to partake in. The discovery is important not just because it's a beautiful and well-preserved Shiv Ling, but also because it reaffirms that there was significant cultural contact between Vietnam and India in ancient times. The temple complex is a World Heritage Site and was built by order of King Indravarman II when he was the ruler of the Khmer Empire. Six other Shiv Lings have also been found at the site, although none of the others is as impressive as this one. The same team has also found black touchstone pillars, red sandstone pillars, and broken idols of ancient gods and goddesses. Taken all together, they feel that this might point to the existence of a hitherto unknown temple hidden among all the others at the complex. Excavating the whole site is such a large-scale job that it's still going on now, over a year since this discovery. Finding an old Roman mosaic in Italy might not sound especially rare or implausible at first, but wait until you hear where this one was discovered. It's the beautiful floor of what would once have been an enormous Roman villa, and it was found beneath the mud and grass of a vineyard in Negrar di Valpolicella, slightly north of Verona. The frustrating thing about this discovery is that it could have been made a century ago. Archaeologists noted the presence of Roman artifacts in the vineyard in 1922, but decided there was no point doing any further digging and left the scene alone. If they'd gone another few feet into the earth, they'd have found the mosaic floor there and then. The vineyard is part of a commune, so any further excavations will have to be carried out with the permission of the commune's occupants who would presumably have to be financially compensated for the temporary or permanent loss of their vineyard. That extra layer of complication might mean that the full villa is never excavated, and we never get an answer to the question of who thought planting a vineyard on a mosaic floor was ever a good idea in the first place. When kids are bored or looking for something to do, they turn to toys. Although the modern toy business is a huge multinational industry, the concept of producing toys dates back to the dawn of humanity. Here's a leather toy mouse unearthed inside the ruins of the ancient Roman fort of Vindolanda, near Hadrian's Wall in England, as an example of how old it is. It is considered to be roughly 1,900 years old by archaeologists. This old shred of leather is just 5 inches in length and an inch wide, yet it's so finely detailed that it even has fur markings all over it. Are we, however, leaping to conclusions by labeling it a child's toy? Maybe we are. The relic was discovered in the fort's commanding officer's quarters. This implies that the officer in charge of a Roman garrison either enjoyed playing with toy mice or had his family and children join him within a military compound. Some historians believe it was more likely a practical joke, devised by idle soldiers to terrify their comrades than a toy. Would Roman troops truly be terrified of mice after all the bloody, visceral battles they'd seen, though? In May 2020, archaeologists in southern Australia visited the rock shelters of Waikiri on the banks of the Murray River for the first time. What they found inside them made them wish they'd given the rock shelter their attention long before now. There inside the shelters, they found aboriginal rock art etched into the limestone, along with invaluable evidence of frontier life and, strangely, a swastika. There are 188 engravings at the site in total. Only one of them, a motif of a tree, can conclusively be said to be of pre-European aboriginal design. The remainder were created by aboriginals influenced or affected by European visitors, members of punitive expeditions, and local European settlers. 
The swastika appears to have been engraved in 1932, several years before the outbreak of the Second World War. According to the archaeologists responsible for the discovery, the presence of the European engravings represents the first known breach of aboriginal cultural space by outsiders and, therefore, the first recorded act of trespass and desecration in Australia. We suppose that makes this an unpleasant discovery, but it's still important nonetheless. When you go somewhere on vacation or holiday, you might buy a trinket or a souvenir to take back home as evidence that you made the trip. It's a curious human habit, but it dates back to the days of the Roman Empire at the very least. We know that because of the discovery of a unique ancient Roman iron stylus on the banks of the former river Walbrook in London, England in July 2019. Upon the four sides of the stylus is etched a lengthy inscription that identifies it as a gift. The inscription, written in Latin, translates as, I have come from the city of Londinium. I bring you a welcome gift with a sharp point so that you may remember me. I may ask, if fortune allows, that I might be able to give as generously as the day is long and my purse is empty. We suspect that some of the charm of the message has been lost in translation, but we understand its general meaning. The stylus was gifted by someone who wanted the recipient to remember them by it, but it's also acknowledged that the gift is cheap and the sender wishes they could have bought something more valuable. To put it in its most simple terms, it says, I went to London and all I got you was this pen. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon.